Okay, good evening. So, um, as promised, we're going to be looking at giant covalent substances. Um, so, you need to be able to describe the bonding in these things and explain their properties um, and relate it to their structure. So, this is a major part of uh, your chemical education is the link between the bonding um, of different substances and their properties. So, the bonding is happening on the microscopic level down at the atoms and molecules. Um, and in the real world, we measure the properties of the bulk of the product and we need to be able to make that link between uh, the microscopic world and the macroscopic world in which we live and that is one of the major jobs of a chemist. So if we look at uh, what the exam board is expecting of you, um, I'll leave that up there for a few seconds but do pause it to have a quick read through it. And as you can see the major substances you need to know about are diamond and graphite and silica or silicon dioxide. Um, diamond and graphite mentioned a couple of times and then these fullerenes uh, which are basically single sheets of graphite which have been rolled up into tubes or into balls um, and were discovered, uh, the first ones were discovered in 1985 so relatively uh, modern material which is going to be very important, is very important now will become increasingly important um, as time goes on. So if we look at uh, diamond to start with, um, this is a giant structure so this is a image of diamond, very small portion of it. This is an image of graphite and this is uh, just an example of a metal just to help us uh, understand one of the properties of graphite. Uh, both graphite and um, diamond, sorry graphite here and diamond here are examples of pure carbon and this is what's known as um, an allotrope. So where we have um, one substance in this case carbon, which can have multiple forms. So carbon and graphite are allotropes of carbon. And their different properties, diamonds very strong, shiny, very valuable. Um, uh, their properties are due to the bonding here. Whereas graphite, whereas their properties of graphite are very different. It's a black substance, you can't see through it. Uh, it's very soft, useful as a lubricant and it conducts electricity unlike diamond. So if we just look superficially at um, the difference between the structures, the balls here indicate the carbon atoms and the balls here the carbon atoms, uh, you can see that each carbon is bonded to one, two, three, four other carbons and another carbon here bonded to one, two, three, four carbons whereas here we can see each carbon is only bonded to three other carbons. So this um, is the main reason that we have these major differences in properties because of this difference between the bonding. So if we remember how our carbon bonds, it's in group 4, so it starts off with 4 electrons in its outer shell. And if we take a simple substance like um, methane, then methane comes along with its 4 hydrogens and that donates one extra electron to these shared pair. And we have single covalent bonds and we have our methane satisfying the outer shell of carbon now with its 8. This is an example of a simple molecule uh, because this is the boundary, this is the um, maximum number of atoms we need to make up uh, methane and we stop at this stage. We say the formula of this is CH4, it is a simple covalent molecule um, and it is complete with one carbon and four hydrogens. By contrast, when we get onto giant covalent molecules, we take our first carbon with its four electrons in its outer shell and then because it is pure carbon, next to it we need four more carbons but now we put these electrons in and we'll use circles this time one two three four here one two three four here four there one two three four and four there one two three four so this carbon in the center is now satisfied it's got its eight electrons but then we look at this carbon here it needs to be surrounded by carbons as well to fill its outer shell. So we put a carbon here, a carbon here, and a carbon here. This carbon is now bonded to one, two, three, four carbons. And those electrons, which we'll put in as crosses, let's say there's one there, one there, one there. And then this carbon can also bond to this carbon, form another covalent bond. This carbon, one, two, three, four electrons. And then this carbon here has its one, two, three, four electrons. So this carbon bonds to this one here and this one here. And then we'd need more carbons around here to satisfy all these uh, bonds and then another layer and another layer and another layer. And this fits our definition of a giant um, substance. The 
limit of this goes on and on. We have millions and millions of atoms each direction, left and right and up and down and forwards and backwards. And we can't say uh, we are limited to a particular number. Clearly when we get a substance like a diamond there is a limit to it. It is physically finishes at the edges of the diamond um, but it is a giant lattice, everything in um, regular arrangements um, and we just give it its formula which is what we call the empirical formula, the simplest formula. This we just say C solid. Okay so that would be an example of diamond Now the bonding in graphite is slightly more complicated and not something you need to know about uh, for your GCSE. Um, suffice it to say that we've got these three covalent bonds here and if we think about carbon again it's got its four electrons. So if three of these are involved in bonding to three other carbons, like so, then this electron here is not involved in a covalent bond and it's a special kind of electron. We call it a D localized electron. So literally it is free to move around uh, the graphite layer and because it's free to move around this allows our graphite to be good electrical conductor. Okay so if you apply a electric field um, a positive on one end negative on the other the electrons will flow in the direction of the positive um, positive end of that field and because we've got a flow of charged particles this makes this an electrical conductor. So one of the uses of graphite is in electrolysis. You'll have used uh, a graphite electrode to do electrolysis of copper sulfate solution for example um, and it's widely used in the aluminium production industry um, to get aluminium, pure aluminium. Okay so it's a good electrical conductor because there's these free particles as well it's a good uh, heat conductor as well this will conduct heat very effectively. By contrast uh, up here in our diamond because all the electrons are localized um, in the single covalent bonds none of these are free to move around so diamond is a very good insulator. You apply an electric field across it none of the particles are free to move and therefore it doesn't conduct electricity. Um, another uh, because uh, these carbons have three uh, bonds to it and the fourth electron is delocalized here, there is actually no bonding between these layers here. So we have one layer of graphite here, one layer of graphite here, one layer of graphite here. They are held together, there's very weak bonds uh, between these, otherwise this would just fall apart. Um, but the force required to break these layers or move these layers past each other is very weak and this gives another property um, of graphite is that it's very soft and it can be used as a lubricant. Okay, if you apply a pressure, if you apply a force on the top layer and one on the other side, then they will move very easily past each other. So the layers will slide past each other. Very similar to um, the metals that we have down here. This is a reminder of what metals look like. Regular rows of metallic ions um, bound together and we'll come on to metals later. If you apply a force to it, the layers will slide past each other, allowing you to um, bend the metal. So pure metals are very soft because these layers can slide. Graphite is very soft because the layers can easily slide past each other. Okay. Now all of these um, substances, the um, diamond and the graphite, um, have very high melting and boiling points and this is a common argument that you need to make um, in the, your chemistry. Um, it has a very high melting and boiling point because um, the substances are held together by many, that's a key word there, strong covalent bonds. Okay, so that is describing the structure of the diamond, which is the first step to answering these kind of questions. Um, and then you say to melt these bonds need to weaken and break. Therefore, a large amount of energy is required.
So here we've spoken about there being many strong bonds, then you've linked it to a large amount of energy being required, which is the next key step. Um, therefore, high temperatures required. So now you've linked it, linked the idea of energy to temperature, and therefore substances have high melting or boiling points. So this is a very common argument which you're going to make uh, in all of your uh, discussion of structures. Identify the types of bonds, and if it's a giant structure, identify that there's many of them. Identify that to weaken or break in them, to melt or boil them, you need to have a large amount of energy. Identify, therefore, that you need a high temperature, and therefore link it right back to the start, that they have high melting and boiling points. A lot of people will make this um, assumption here, um, and correctly define the types of bonds, and that there's lots of them. Um, and most people will then uh, talk about there being large amounts of energy, but this step is commonly um, missed out, high temperatures uh, being required, or this step is missed out, uh, saying there's large amounts of energy required. So ensure that you make all of these individual points when you're writing your answers and discussing these properties. Okay, so that is the um, properties of these. Um, if we move on to um, some of the more modern materials, so this is our graphite again. If you take one of these layers, and it's very easy to uh, separate these out, you can literally use sellotape. If you um, colour in on uh, a piece of paper, put a layer of sellotape on top of it and peel it off, this is enough to separate these layers out. Wrap it round in a tube, then we get what we call um, nanotubes. So nano from the fact that they're very small and tubes from the fact that they are tubes. And because uh, the graphite layers can conduct electricity, these can conduct electricity. And so uh, people are uh, investigating turning these into uh, m um, microscopic wires or nanoscopic wires that can be used in computer chips. And that good work is moving towards that. These are very, very strong. These covalent bonds are very strong. So um, it's sometimes said that these tubes are five times stronger than steel, uh, weight for weight. So um, mega long, um, bridges, so a bridge between here and France would be possible with this kind of material. And then if you wrap the tube into a ball, you get the buckyball, which was one of the first of these uh, fullerenes to be discovered. So all of these um, are named fullerenes. And this is named after an architect called Buckminster Fuller, who produced uh, architectural structures very much like this. Uh, this one's called C60, or the buckyball. Um, because it's got 60 carbons and that's it. Um, and these kind of structures can be useful um, in lubricants. They're very good at lubricants, just like graphite, um, in delivering medicines to the body. Um, they're very strong uh, supercapacitors. So, um, you know, a phone that would last for weeks and weeks on a charge. These are all the kind of um, materials and substances which are going to be um, produced in the next 10 or 15 years. So if you're getting into this kind of research and development, this is the kind of work that you may well uh, be looking at uh, in the future. Uh, the last of the giant covalent substances that you need to know about is uh, silicon dioxide, which has a very similar structure to diamond. If you imagine this is a carbon atom here, and you can imagine these are carbon atoms here, here and here, um, we've just got an oxygen in between this. So if we look at where uh, silicon is on the periodic table, here's carbon, here's silicon. Silicon can't form uh, a complete analogue of the diamond because the atom's too big um, and it can't form four covalent bonds to itself very effectively, um, whereas the oxygen in the middle is much smaller and this allows us to um, form this tetrahedral structure, so it's very similar um, in structure. Giant covalent substance again, many strong bonds, therefore high melting point, high boiling point, and the silicon atom has its four electrons all bound up in covalent bonds, um, so it can't conduct electricity uh, effectively at all. Okay, so just uh, going back to our um, learning objectives, you need to describe uh, the giant structures and explain their properties. So we've run through diamond graphite, silicon dioxide, and the fullerenes. Um, have watched this video a few times, make your own notes, and um, make sure you can uh, answer the questions about how we link the properties, um, structure and bonding. Thank you.